So what I have here is a simple circuit. At the moment, we've got a power supply. Now, what we can do is in this circuit, we can connect up various components. So first of all, I'm going to start with a resistor and I'm going to put the resistor across that little gap. Now, what we can then do is we can maybe start to measure things about it. We can maybe use a voltmeter to measure the potential difference across that component. And if we have an ammeter, we can put the ammeter in series with a component to measure the current that's actually passing through it. Now, this is a pretty static circuit, but what I can do is I can basically add in a variable resistor. So this is a variable resistor. What it does is we can adjust its value to alter the, the current moving through this component and also the share of the potential difference in the circuit. So I'm just gonna put that in there. So what we can now do, we can start to take some readings. And what we can maybe do is we can maybe take readings for the current uh, measured in amps and also the potential difference across that component measured in volts. And if we then plotted this on a graph, we'd get something that looks a bit like this. And I'm gonna use I to go on the Y axis and I'm gonna measure the potential difference on the X axis. But what I can also do with this circuit is I can also change the polarity of the uh, cell that we have up here. So there we go. And what this means now is that the conventional current, rather than going this way around the circuit, tends to go in this direction. So we now have values for current, which are negative, and this will then give us a negative potential difference across that component. So this means we can now look at the IV characteristics of different components. So first of all, we can look at this resistor. Now a resistor is designed to have a constant resistance. That's the whole point in it. And therefore it acts as an ohmic conductor. What that means is that the current is always directly proportional to the potential difference. And if we actually look at uh, maybe kind of doing a real practical with this, as we get different values of I and the corresponding values of V, we get a graph that looks like this. And the important things to note are that the I value is proportional to the potential difference. This is because it's an ohmic conductor. Uh, and also this means that the resistance is constant, which again is the whole point. You want a 100 ohm resistor to always be 100 ohms. And the other thing to note is this has the same characteristics if the current is going forwards or backwards in that circuit. Now, perhaps we maybe have a different value of resistance, which is a bit higher. If it's got a higher resistance, that means for the same potential difference, the current that will flow is going to be less. And this is always going to be the case. So every time you have the same potential difference, it might only let maybe half the current through. And if you have a resistor that has maybe a higher resistance, what we tend to find is that it has a lower graph or a lower gradient on the graph. So what we have here then, I'll just move that back, is here we have maybe a low resistance and here we have a high value of resistance, whereas before it was a lot lower. Not everything can be made out of very nice simple resistors. And here we have another component. And here we have a filament bulb. The reason it's called a filament is if you look very closely, you can just about see a little filament of tungsten. And tungsten is chosen because it has a very, very high melting point, over 3000 degrees. And this means if we pass the current through it, the piece of wire inside gets very, very hot. And the hotter something is, the more wavelengths of light it gives out. So basically, we just have uh, something which is very hot and it gives out a lot of light. And if we look at the, the IV characteristics of this component, we'll put that there just in, in the circuit, uh, what we find is that um, we get a shape of graph that looks like this. So again, it passes through the origin, but here we have a steeper gradient than at the end. So there's a few things to note about this. First of all, it behaves the same uh, whichever way the current is flowing. Uh, also, the resistance increases as the current increases. So the higher the current we have, the greater the resistance, which tends to mean uh, that the graph kind of flattens off. Now, it's important to note that the resistance is not equal to the gradient of the line. The resistance at any point is equal to the value of I divided by the value of R, and it's not the gradient. Now, the other thing is that this doesn't follow Ohm's law, uh, because what we don't have is this constant proportionality between current and uh, potential difference. So why does the resistance go up as the current goes up? Well, the greater the flow of these uh, charge carriers, the electrons in the wire, the more that they knock into the metal lattice and start it vibrating. And the more that vibrates, the more resistance there is to the current uh, flowing in the first place. So it's the act of the current itself, the electrons hitting the metal lattice, that causes this greater resistance at greater temperatures.
So the final component I'd like to talk about is this one here. Now at first glance it looks a bit like a resistor but it's not. This is actually a diode. Now a diode is basically acting like a one-way valve and if we think about the direction of conventional current it lets conventional current through but any current flowing in the other direction it puts a stop to. And uh, the one that you're more, maybe more familiar with is an LED which is a light emitting diode. Now what I can do with this is uh, the two prongs, we have a positive and a negative and I've got a couple of small cells here. Now, if I connect this diode up one way, nothing happens at all, the, li the light doesn't light up. If, however, I turn these round and I light it up now, we can see that we've got light coming out. And we only get that in one direction. If I turn it around the other way, no light comes out, no current is flowing. I turn it around and again, light now comes out. So what this means is it acts as a one-way valve. And if we put this into our uh, circuit here and we start to kind of look at how the current and the potential difference change what we find is that when we have uh, the current flowing in one direction we get well we have no current at all and we get something that looks like this and this kind of continues slightly and then the graph kind of tends to go up like this now the important thing to note is over here effectively the resistance uh, is infinite because no current is flowing over here we have something called the threshold voltage and below this value we have no current flowing at all. And this is going to be really important later when you come to do a practical looking at the value of Planck's constant. And in this region up here what we have is a very steep line and what happens here is that the resistance uh, goes down to a very very small amount. And this is why these are useful. If you have current flowing in one direction uh, there's effectively no resistance and it just passes straight through. Uh, as soon as the current flows the other way round this has an infinite resistance and it stops that flowing. And this is a kind of useful one-way valve that comes, uh, comes up all over the place uh, and we can use it to protect other components in circuits. So to summarise here are the IV characteristics or components that you need to know about. We have a resistor or an ohmic conductor, we have a filament lamp and we also have a diode or an LED. And what we can see here, just from these characteristics, we can then identify what kind of component we have in a circuit.